We have one very big disease in the ummah. That is, we don't greet each other. That's why there is no mahabba, there is no love. We don't greet. The hadith says, Ala adullukum, ala amrin ida fa'altumuhu tahababtu. Should I show you something? Before I translate that hadith, let me tell you. Don't you agree that we are very disunited and fragmented as an ummah today? Don't you agree? We have small, small groups and small, small factions and people don't want to talk and don't want to look at each other. So here is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is saying to you and to me, should I not show you something? If you do it, it will increase the love between you. Should I not show you something? If you do it, it will increase the mahabba. Now, you, if I say, yes, please show me. Today, if you tell someone, show me, he will stand up and give you a long lecture, what to do, what not to do, how much money to give, how much this, this, how much that, and long talks. And even after that, we will be frustrated and we won't find that love and that mahabba. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, let me show it to you. One simple thing. Afshus salam abaynakum. Spread the salam between you. Spread the greeting of peace genuinely between you. Greet each other, smile, and don't go too much beyond that. You see, the problem is, if I greet you, Salaamu Alaikum, my brother, how are you? I need to watch the expression on my face. It must be good and pleasant, not Salaamu Alaikum. And I walk away. You see that? Salaamu Alaikum. The brother will say, why are you sniffing at me? I don't need this. You see? Be genuine. Salaamu Alaikum. MashaAllah. Look at the expression. There must be positive power and energy coming from your face. Because people, when they look at you, they need to see and believe you are genuine. That's all. You are genuine, sincere person. You really want to greet. Assalamu Alaikum. And what you do? Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Maybe one or two simple questions about how are you my brother? How is everything? Okay, yes, fine. Stop there. Proceed. Don't go too much into private nitty-gritties. Brother, what's your job? How much salary are you getting every month? Where do you buy your stock from? What is the cost price of these goods? I'm going to come to your business. What do you do? Okay, I need to do this, this. I'm going to have a discount from you. Give me a... That salam was a waste of time. That salam was for another reason. This is why when Muslims deal with Muslims, a lot of people say, no, 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 I prefer not to. Because this guy is going to cry for a discount, he's not going to pay me. He's going to say, I'm a Muslim brother, you need to have mercy on me. Yet, the mercy that those I owe money to is not the same. Subhanallah. Then you cannot go to someone you owe money to and say, Are, I, I cannot pay you because there are Muslims here who have not paid me because, you know, I'm having mercy on them. You cannot do that. This is why we say when you want to greet someone, greet properly. He's your brother. If you visit his shop, pay the full price. It is better for you to do dealing in that way. If you visit his business, he may decide to give you some discount and so on. But you need to know, my brothers and my sisters, when we are separated, when we allow the dunya to come between us, we will be separated. When we do it for the sake of Allah, we will always be united. So greet each other. I know it sounds very small and simple, but wallahi, I am only telling it to you because it is the remedy provided by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If it was not said by him, why would I say it today? He says clearly, should I not show you something if you were to do it? Love would, it would cause love amongst yourselves. Spread the salam, greet each other. Today we don't greet. I promise you the non-Muslims greet us more than the Muslims. Even myself, I promise you, you have a lot of non-Muslims, they look at you, they see you with a beard, they smile at you, hello. Wow, what happened here? Subhanallah. And then you look at a Muslim walking, you know, like, like he's really someone who has so much of problem, difficulty, he's feeling difficult to look at your face. Why? Greet. To sallim ala kulli man arafta wa man lam ta'arif. Greet those whom you know, and those whom you don't know, you will find your heart will become clear. This is why the Prophet ﷺ told one of his companions, if you are able to get up at night or to, or to get up in the morning and to go to bed at night without a feeling of negativity in your heart for anyone and everyone else, then do it. Do it. Subhanallah. You will enter Jannah. A lot of us have baggage. What is that baggage? Thoughts, misunderstandings, 
with one another. Sometimes our children, our own family members, and we don't get along. Is that what we were created for? To try and leave the problem? People say, I will sort you out on the day of judgment. Have you heard that? I will wait for the day of Qiyamah and I will fix you. How do you know? When you get to the day of Qiyamah, the tables might turn, you might find out that person was right, you were wrong. Then what will you do? That is why the hadith says, solve your problem here. If you can, solve it here. Make sure, because on that day, there is no dirham, no dinar that will help you. You don't know what will happen. What if you find out you were wrong? It's over. You lose. We cannot afford to lose. Learn to forgive. Learn to embrace. Learn to love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed you will see the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will witness how Jannah is earned through simple deeds that sometimes we take for granted. We take simple deeds for granted. I always give an example of how there was a person who gave a dog water to drink and Allah forgave him. Because he had a good feeling towards another creature of Allah, which is a dog. The hadith could have used the example of a bird or some beautiful creature, a peacock, something like that. But the hadith used the example of a dog. A dog, you know the ruling regarding dogs. Dog. Muslims see a dog, they run the other way. I know that. But he gave water to the dog. Subhanallah. Allah gave him forgiveness. What do you think you will achieve when you reach out to another human being? Even if they do not belong to your faith, no problem. You reach out to them. You give them water and drink. You were kind to them. You smiled at them. What's wrong? They looked at you and they said, MashaAllah, these Muslims, they always have a good expression. I have so many examples of that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and ease. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. These are a few words of a message that I, would, I intended to deliver to you today so that I can improve my life and my relation with Allah. And so that all of us here can improve our relationship with Allah and our relationship with the rest of those who are around us so that we can be the best when we die, we will die in the best condition.